There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Wellness Wellbeing Wednesday, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. We have an amazing speaker. Say hello, Summer. Thank you for being hello, here. Hello. Nice to be here. Nice to be here. And what I am excited about that um, we are is look at these features that I have right here. Look at <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Where did we go? There we go. Wow, that's good. good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm excited to be here. We are also on Clubhouse and I just want to say welcome. Welcome everyone. Today is Wellness Wellbeing Wednesday and I want to say thank you so much for joining us um, as I am sharing tips. Our series this month is revitalizing yourself with a lasting lifestyle uh, changes and a wellness mindset and we are in part 10. Today, we have a wonderful special guest speaker, uh, Summer DeCoste, who is going to be sharing um, her story, God's story of inspiring hope and spreading faith. Um, but before we get started, um, I just want to take a few moments of stillness that we always like to do here on Wellness Wednesday, because there's people out there that are hurting and people that are troubled and turmoil in turmoil or trauma whatever that is if that is you this these few moments of stillness is for you from all that's happening in israel from syria from lebanon from turkey from shootings around the world um maybe it's just some traumas or turmoil within your own country within your own state or province or within your own town or community, or maybe it's within your own family, your home, or it could even just be within your own self. This moment of stillness is for you as we're just asking God for that hedge of protection over us to shower over us. Thank you for just a few moments of stillness. <laughs> Asking God just for that hedge of protection over us to shower over as we are just able to be still and know that God is here. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I hope the audio is coming through on Clubhouse. If you are on Clubhouse, just give me a thumbs up or something that you can hear us okay. And uh, I am super excited to be here. Um, as I mentioned, today we are... Um, We've got an amazing speaker, but I also want to say that we're bringing awareness to some wonderful um, awarenesses this month. And one of them is pancreatic cancer, um, which is why we have this amazing speaker. We also are um, going to be talking about the 2024 PanCan uh, Walk. So I've done that as an awareness and the National Family Caregivers Month, National Diabetes Month, Native American Heritage Month, the International Survivors of Suicide Loss Day. Uh, yesterday we had Giving Tuesday. This month we've also had um, Veterans Day, World Kindness Day, Thanksgiving. What I like to say is these are all um, opportunities for not just for the day, but it's for the month and the year. And of course, we have Pancreatic Cancer Month. And another one that's very dear that's coming up is the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. So my name is Michelle Maynard MacArthur, and um, one, you are in the Elephant Strategy Club on Clubhouse, but I am your hospitality health and wellness strategist that is here to help guide you through a positive process for change. And that is with the lean, holistic healing approach from the inside out. Mm -hmm. That lean stands for your lifestyle your exercise, your attitude, and your nutrition. The fun part is taking and showing you two top luxury wellness destinations around the world. One of those is going to be in Virginia in April, so you stay tuned for that. Um, I am a master certified, international master certified health and wellness coach that complements the certification I have in traditional Chinese medicine, along with a 30 plus year career in hospitality, site selections. 
So in tourism, mm -hmm. hotels, I'm just super excited about um, the, uh, the topic we have today. And I'm very passionate about that. Um, the tips and everything is being brought to you by MacArthur Accommodations, where we are a hospitality, health and wellness, coaching and uh, consulting advisement company that specializes in that overall health and wellness worldwide with those innovations to reflect, recharge and renew yourself one step at a time. And my purpose, passion, and why is that I am a survivor. I'm an overcomer of a progressive degenerative neuromuscular disorder, along with depression, for over 30 years. Uh, but I get to be here today, whether I'm twitching, stuttering, uncomfortable pauses, whatever that might be, this is about sharing a story and this is about God's story. And so what I'd like to do is just to introduce this amazing speaker. Summer is a dedicated advocate, pancreatic cancer, not just a survivor, she is an overcomer and she's a distributor of hope for those facing similar challenges. Five years ago, her journey with pancreatic cancer began, and she is incredibly grateful to share that she has surpassed the staggering odds with a survival rate of only 12%. As she's a member of the Pancreatic Action Network Committee in Richmond, Virginia, where she has been deeply involved in the mission to raise awareness and support pancreatic cancer patients and their families. On April 27th of 2024, she's going to tell us about um, some exciting things also. They will be um, participating in the PanCan Purple Stride. We all got our purple on today, and she uh, warmly welcomes anybody that uh, wishes to join her in walking with um, our summer's hope team. Together, we can make a meaningful impact in the fight against pancreatic cancer, which is a nasty, nasty, horrific illness. Her personal mission is to inspire hope as she is driven by the desire to share how God's presence, his strength um, are on loan to her is her words. She is um, that they have sustained her through her, her adventure. Regardless of the outcome, she found peace and solace in the knowledge that she was in good hands living by the verse of her favorite verse is Romans 12, 12. My unwaverly faith has been my guiding light, providing her, providing me with a sense of peace that surpasses all understanding. And this is something that Summer Tet says time and time again, how grateful she is. But in addition to this advocacy work, she is a creative artist who finds solace and inspiration through her painting and meditation on the word of Jesus. Her approach um, is life with a, she approaches um, life with a dedicated journaling practice, cherishing the opportunity for introspection and creativity. In her personal life, she is devoted, she is a devoted wife um, that is supported by a partner who has demonstrated his unwavering commitment, especially during her health challenges. I want everyone just to uh, uh, join me in welcoming this amazing, amazing woman that I had the joy of meeting on uh, Clubhouse two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. How many years ago has it been, Summer? It'll be three years in January. We started the Elephant Strategy Club. Yes, and um, as Yep, you're right. And that right there took just a um, a turn between um, Summer and Lachelle and all of us, um, what I call a little founding group in the uh, clubhouse that we were there and we didn't know what we were doing, but we just we just showed up and with tears and fears and just outpouring our hearts. Uh, we were able to really reach out and touch people and be touched, not just in one area, but all around the world, which is what Jesus wants us to do and which is why we're here. So I, without further ado, want to just turn this over. Um, Summer, I want to say thank you so much for saying yes 
th thank you so much for being here today. And I will be popping up her um, social media contact. And just uh, thank you for being here and saying yes, Summer. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to be here overall. I, I will say and this morning has been a challenge, as Michelle knows. Um, I woke up this morning and I, you know, had everything together except for the things that I needed to get myself together, <laughs> which means makeup. I have no makeup on, not a lick of it. But the good news is, um, you know, have my little meltdown. I'm fine now. And it is what it is because like, you know, I, I am who God created me. And really the most important thing, as you mentioned, is you know, that, that we get the word out, that we get the message out. And, um, and that's what I'm glad to do today. And I will just start out by saying that, um, you know, I didn't even know in the beginning what a pancreas was. It didn't, you know, it didn't dawn on me that I would ever have a problem with something that I couldn't identify. And so when, uh, when the doctor called me and, you know, I had, let me just start from the very beginning, because I think that that's important. And that is, I was not feeling well to begin with. I was having some issues kind of like indigestion, it felt like, or what, you know, the way I thought of it was, is this indigestion or heartburn or whatever? It was just right here, right in the middle. And I could not, you know, the pain would not go away. And I was taking antacids. I was taking Pepsid, you name it, whatever I could do to just the remedy right at the moment I needed, I wanted. And my back was killing me. So my husband was out of town. My in-laws were out of town. And really, I would usually run that by them and uh, was able to get a last minute doctor's appointment, which is unheard of. Honestly, um, I've been seeing the same doctor for 20 years and she was able to see me that day. Somebody had canceled. So I scurried down there. And she said, you know, keep taking the Pepsi. Let's see where this takes us. And I'm walking out the door. I have my hand on the, I remember this, hand on the door knob to walk out. And I turned around. I said, you know, that's all good and everything. But what about my back? I mean, this pain is crazy. It's not like anything I've experienced before. So at that point, she said, maybe we do an ultrasound. So we did an ultrasound. And then like a couple days after that, she called and said, I want to do a CT scan. Can you get in there today? Yes. So I did that. I mean, everything was pretty quick. And um, a week had gone by um, with the tests that I had done. And then she called me on a Monday morning and said, can you bring your husband down with you today to see me? And I'm thinking, that's why, you know. But, uh, but I thought, you know, well, she's just protecting me. But at the same time, um, I knew that there was something bigger, you know, going on. And so I ended up inviting a friend of mine to go with me to the doctor's appointment. Thank God. And she recorded the message for me or recorded the message, recorded our conversation with the doctor as we were there that day. And um, I will never forget the doctor went through her whole spiel about what was going on. And then she said, Summer, do you have any questions? Cause I had nothing to say, believe it or not. And I said, what, what are you saying? And she said, you know, you have pancreatic, you know, cancer. And I think I said something like, you know, can I live without my pancreas? I mean, can we just take this out? I mean, that was my mentality, <laughs> mentality, not really grasping how, uh, not really grasping the gravity of the situation at the time, other than I was just in shock, I think. And we went down, we got into the car, and then my girlfriend put my husband and then my in-laws were somewhere else on a trip. And she had them on a conference call. She told them what happened. And I didn't say a word during that conversation. I remember on the way home, I even called, which I think is important. I have a mental health professional that I talked to. And I called her on my way home because, you know, I had to get in my car to go home from, you know, from there. And um, I was just more concerned about, like, can I take more of this medication than usual? Because this is more than I can handle right now. And um, 
you know, we talked for a little bit, which was good. But I had some moments on the way home where I, I was just so confused. I turned the radio on and the song that came on the, the radio was a song that was just being released that day at that time. And, um, and it was called Fear is a Liar by Zach Williams. And it was talking about how fear can just rob you of your joy and, and the good stuff. If you just focus on and concentrate on the things that, you know, we just don't know the answers to. And, um, and I just remember pulling the car over and just crying because I thought, you know what? I don't even know what this is. And I'm treating it like it's the biggest giant in my life. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that right now I'm by myself. At the moment, I get home. I called my husband to talk to him, and I said, "Please don't come home." I was worried about him traveling. You know, I didn't want accidents or anything else to happen. And I said, "Just stay where you are, and then tomorrow we'll we'll talk about this." But the really amazing part to me, and anybody who knows me knows that I like to, um, I like to research things. I like to find out information. I'm really, I mean, I like to learn things. Um, so the fact that I didn't get online either right away or that night when Bill was not home, I was by myself. Um, to me, I had so many moments like that during this where I knew that God had his hand on me and, you know, you've heard divine intervention a million times that those words, but truly that was to me a divine intervention because had I looked online, I think I would have been a mess. I mean, it was, I saw the statistics, which at that time, that was 2018, uh, the survival rate for pancreatic cancer was 9%. And I remember crying with Bill and when I did hear that and I heard it from, you know, one of the doctors who said, you know, most people don't make it out of this, you know, and another doctor who said, you know, 9% and that sort of thing. And I just remember, like, like I said, just losing my mind with Bill when I got home that night and he sat down, grabbed me and he said, that's nine. Okay. You have nine. So let's grab on to nine and then let's just keep it moving. Right. So, I mean, all these little things add up in the, in the grand scheme of things, because originally, you know, right after I got diagnosed and, you know, we were going for one of the first tests, one of the first CT scan, or no, I was having um, an echocardiogram, I guess, or where they put the uh, scope down your neck, down your throat. And I was, my mother-in-law came to pick me up and she said, um, you know, if you're upset about anything, if you want to talk about anything, now's your time. Like, just let it all out. And I remember I was just screaming. I did. I just let it all out. And I just thought, God, what did I do? You know, what did I do to deserve this? And then I went to, are you even around? You know, I mean, I was so mad and so confused at that moment that I just... I said, I guess now it's time for me to stop praying for other people and start deciding whether I believe in prayer, whether I believe in God, you know? So when I say that these things were adding up, these things were adding up in my mind because that had happened before all of this, where my initial, you know, general doctor sent me directly to a surgeon who ultimately ended up being the surgeon that, you know, helped me through everything. Um, you know, that I didn't Google anything on my own when that is just, uh, that's, you know, that's in me to just find out everything I can, especially something where they were telling me how serious it was. But I didn't, I didn't want to know. I felt like I was in good hands. Once I reconciled, once, once I reconciled and figured out, like, look, you know, your faith has been tested before and God was successful before you let him be, you know, you, you recognize that. And so here we are again. And I felt like for years before that I had been preparing for, or, or God was equipping me really with these Bible studies that I was in like battlefield of the mind. And another book that I had that was called a hundred scriptures. Everyone should learn by heart. 
And those scriptures I would take and put in my pocket, like one a week or sometimes one a month to learn and meditate on. And so something else that happened is that, you know, once I was getting into my treatments, I was in a clinical trial and um, the nurses, everyone showed such compassion and love for me. One in particular, when I was doing an MRI, I remember she and that was in the initial stages as well, where right before she, you know, pushed me in the machine, she said she noticed that I had just started to cry and I had just put like a covering over my face. And then she stopped the th everything and came out and she grabbed my hand and she said, I pray. Do you want me to pray with you? And I, of course, cried. I asked her kindly. Yes, she did. And then the tears went away. It was not magic, but it was the way that I felt like God was just showing me, look, you're not alone in this. Wherever you see love, wherever you see someone that's paying attention to your needs, that that's all part of the plan. That's all part of where you're supposed to be and when. And so I did go through with um, chemo in the clinical trial, and that was really hard. Um, that was really hard, but I had really good support again from my mother-in-law who was a retired nurse, is a retired nurse, and my husband who used to be a paramedic years and years ago, and it just felt like he had my back always, reminding me just do today, you know, because tomorrow has enough troubles of its own. Sometimes it was just do this hour, you know, so for someone who, you know, he didn't, I, I, and I've told him a million times, I said, you know, when you said in sickness and in health, you really meant it, didn't you? You know, because I was, I lost 70 pounds within a matter of a couple months when I was going through treatment initially. Um, the numbers were coming down. It was a borderline resectable tumor. Uh, and they wanted to wait to see what the chemo would do before they would say it was okay for me to have a, a approve a surgery that's called a Whipple procedure which in itself is a, is a major surgery, but we did get to that point and that was July 20th in 2018. And that's where they remove your duodenum, you know, um, sometimes part of your stomach, um, your gallbladder, um, and they reconnect all this together again. And of course the disease part, the tumor part, and then in my case, because, you know, I was approved for the surgery, um, they also removed some lymph nodes during surgery, thank God. And that was a 14 hour surgery. And after coming out of that surgery, um, was like the happiest day of my life to open my eyes and see people because I wasn't sure if I was gonna make it out of that surgery. Um, at all or well, or even half well, I, I had no clue. I really, um, I just had hope. And my hope was at one point during all of this, um, my hope was that I would realize that, you know, one, that God was there with me, but that because God is there with me and because I, am a believer in Jesus Christ, that he would never leave me, one, and he didn't leave me. And there were times that I feel like the Holy Spirit, you know, a lot of people think that's woo-woo, but I felt like I was being led this entire time from one thing to the next thing to the next thing, and I was just going to do what I needed to do and being faithful and, you know, trusting trusting that God had me going to the right places at the right time. And I, I didn't have any kind of questions about any of the doctors or anything that I was dealing with at the time. Felt like I was in good hands. But I also felt like I was in good hands if this didn't go the way that the doctors wanted it to go, the way that, you know, everybody wants, you know, you think everybody wants to just make it on the other side of this, right? Um, but I did come to that reality of if I don't make it on the other side of this in this life, then I'm okay no matter what. At least that was my comfort was that 
God's in control and I just released that control to him, I lived for the prayers of other people. I cannot tell you how much that meant to me um, when people would tell me that they would pray for me. Um, that was life to me. And I will never forget that along with, you know, talking about Holy Spirit moments. I just had, I just remembered that after my first chemo treatment, I, I don't know if I was still asleep or I had just woken up or woken up. I'm not sure, but I remember seeing my mother's face, her hands on my face and I, and my mother passed away in 91 and for her and her looking at me and saying, not yet summer. And to me, that was, I think, you know, a lot of times you can't put a face or you, you know, on the Holy spirit, maybe that was just God's way of saying, you know, she'll listen to her, you know, she loved her. She'll listen to her not knowing what not yet meant. But um, it was really a combination of things like that. And then also of scriptures that would come to me when I was laying in a hospital bed and I couldn't read them for myself or songs that would come in my head that I knew God was sending into my head, not necessarily even Christian songs. They were just songs that I knew, you know, I connected to God. That was our language to each other. So the, the scriptures that I, all those scriptures that I had memorized, you know, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Um, all of, I mean, that, that was one that stuck with me always because I thought, look, I am hopeful. You know, I believe in God. That is my hope. He is my hope. He is my foundation. And wherever he wants me to go is where I want to go. And I had that surgery, made it through the surgery. On the other side of it, I had a great deal of um, nausea and uh, being able to hold. I had you know, dumping syndrome. I had some gastroparesis going on. Um, I had to have a lot of different, I had Botox inserted into my stomach so that it would hold the food. I mean, there were so many, so many different crazy things that they did to help keep me alive, like keep the food, the nutrition, doing what it's supposed to be doing. And uh, I had a feeding tube and I believe that was from September until about May that was happening up, but I was in the hospital more than I was at home during that time. You know, um, I, I want to just um, kind of just pause if I can for a moment, because yeah. all that for people that are out there listening um, and um, I know our time is going to be coming um, to a close soon. So I want to make sure um, anybody listening that um, you're going through this and you're hearing these words, because that's the part, that's what hope is about, of going through these struggles. And for me as a believer too, um, as our Lord and Jesus, and this is where Summer and I connected these stories. It, you may be out there and it may be, well, I don't have pancreatic cancer. That, you know, that doesn't relate. The story, the God story is that there is hope. It doesn't matter. Now, we are in pancreatic cancer month. Um, and everything that I mentioned before, but it is about hope. And what I love how Summer's evolved, and you can listen to the past two other um, times that Summer and I came together um, around this awareness is to inspire faith. And my, my story is sharing that gift of everlasting life, you know, inspiring faith, having hope, that right there is the biggest thing that I know that summer is about, you know, making sure that while we are here, she is here on this earth because we're just passing through. This is not our home. Please remember that whoever's listening, this is not our home um, with Jesus. Everlasting life is with our home. But while we are here bringing that awareness, being that voice, and I'm grateful that she is that voice right now that she is sharing. Um, I want to pop up Summer. Um, I've got her um, Instagram um, and it's um, her Instagram. Is there another one that you want to share 
Um, we've got about 10 minutes left and I'm going to also pop up the pan can uh, stride website for anybody. I did pop it into the chat that you can click, but how else can, um, you know, anybody out there that wants to get in touch with you, how can they reach out to you? Well, I mean, that's the best way is to reach me on um, summer underscore T-H-Y-M-E-S summer times on Instagram and you can direct message me there. And I'm glad to, you know, we can connect that way. That's the best way to reach me most. That's what I check most often. So, um, and then as far as the purple stride, yes, we have team member positions available. The name of my team on the Pancan, Pancan purple stride is summer's hope but that should be in the link in my bio on instagram as well but that's i love the best it best way yeah and we've done um and if you are well i'm not i can't go to virginia you know it's like hey me i am one day because i love to travel right but she had um for all of you listeners 12 days of summer i love that you know but you can join a team, you can walk, you can support her um, wherever you are in the world. Put you some purple on, whatever it I, might yeah, be. Why not? <laughs> and just, you know, walk and support the cause because chances are you know someone. And the other part with um, Wellness Wednesday, we've talked about, and I will probably next month um, put some other wellness tips about what to do for that pancreas, making sure that um, you can. And I don't know, um, I want to just turn the floor back over to you, Summer. Um, any final thoughts, anything that you might have for the listeners that is um, just for you that's pressing you for you to share with the world right now? Well, I mean, you know, there's a couple just quotes that kind of came to mind and that's, and I can't even think of who said this one, but it's, you know, we're all terminal. Some of us are just lucky to know it. And that means a lot to me because, you know, that, that creates in me a different way to live. You know, that every day matters, every moment matters. Being present in those moment matters, in those moments matter. Um, and the reason why I say that is because, you know, people matter. And right now, like you said earlier, a lot of people are hurting. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I, my father just passed away in, in uh, August. And so, you know, going through that grieving process myself, I would say that um, things tend to, you know, sometimes you can get a little, you know, ir more irritable than normal. Um, and, and that's natural, you know, to feel these, these things, but to let things linger and to live in that sadness and not be able to press forward, um, is important. So, I mean, I would say a couple of things and that's one, you know, get help if you need it. We're not professional, we're not doctors, we're not professionals. We're just, I, I am simply sharing my experience and my story with yeah. pancreatic cancer, but I also would say that, um, you know, if you even question uh, or if you're even thinking, like, do I believe in God? I would say give God a try because yeah. he's just what he's just waiting for you. It's a free opportunity. Right. Um, something that um, that is past this life eternally and it's love here on earth. And I get that with people I meet like you and some of the other people in the club that, that we've come so fondly to know that we're learning and growing together in, uh, in our faith. And so I thank you for that too, um, Michelle, for always being there for us. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. And I did. I put the disclaimer in there in the chat um, on all of the platforms. Hopefully I did it um, on um, Clubhouse um, as far as two things. One, uh, we are not here. This is for all for educational purposes only. We are not here to treat, diagnose or prescribe. If you are in immediate needs or in danger, please seek a professional. Um, we are here for resources. We are sharing our story, um, our God story, um, just to bring hope out there as Summer is doing. I did put um, also because when, like Summer mentioned, there's times I put this um, suicide. Uh, that is one of the awarenesses, the loss um, 
uh, day um, this month. But so I put that contact information. Um, and if you need something, we will try to guide you through that. That's what we are here. That's my focus is guiding you through a positive process for change. But um, I just want to say thank you, Summer. Thank you for yes. saying this again. Um, I'm honored now. It's just like every November and April, you have to come on because we have to until, you know, the end of time. Purple yes. is so many things. Um, and for me, it's like a lot. It's because the pancreas and having some dear people that um, have overcome or have not and the survivors, the families, um, it's, it's very it's very dear to me just in the holistic world of learning how to keep your pancreas happy that's purple domestic violence family violence purple. is purple lupus is purple which mm -hmm. you know i have and there's some other ones that are purple right. so i just am loving uh more purple is royalty that we are heiresses to you know the kingdom of of the our god most high but before we close here um, on uh, the social media sites and on camera, Summer, is there anything else that you would like to share uh, before we close here in the next uh, last minute or not, last shameless plug for the last um, uh, minute? Well, I would say that his grace is sufficient for me. His power is made, you know, made strong in my, I, well, I will boast, what is it? I will boast of my weakness. His power is made great in my weakness. Love it. His strength is made great in my weakness. I love and it. so like through all of this, I would say it opened my eyes to the fact that, you know, we're all going to have troubles in this life. It even says so. Amen. But God overcame the world. He overcame the world. And so anybody like that, you know, my creator, as I call him, my father, um, supported me through this. He will support you through anything that you're going through in the midst of it, not after, but in the midst of it. And so I say, just go to him and ask him, you know, to support you, to be his, your, his Lord, your, him to be your Lord and savior. Amen. It's that simple to get, um, to get started with a relationship with him. He doesn't make it difficult. We do, but um, he's there just waiting. And, uh, and I am open to talking to anybody about this beyond this. If you want to DM me, I'm glad to do that. And anyone going through pancreatic cancer, I would say um, contact pancan.org. If you have any questions, patients and families, they can do a lot of good for you. And they have a lot of clinical trials that are available, a lot of information to help you. Um, so I would recommend calling them um, initially as well. I can certainly help you, support you, you know, um, emotionally. I don't know all the ins and outs medically. I'm not even going to try attempt that because every situation is different but I'm certainly glad to support you and be there with you. If you should ever need someone, want someone to be there um, helping you out. I'm, I'm glad to do it. And she truly means it. She truly means it. And that um, website that she gave is definitely one. And summer after um, we close today, I'll let you go in and make sure that that website's on there. Okay. Um, but I want to say thank you to everyone that's uh, tuned in, that's listening to this on the replays. Um, I hope that this has brought you value. And I want to just say what we say in the Elephant Strategy Club. We say a couple of things. One, it's go and be brilliant in the world today. Mm -hmm. And the other is just do today because tomorrow has enough troubles of its own. Concentrate on today. Focus on today. So I am going to close us out from the live part right here. And um, then we will, um, Summer, we will stay on to close out on um, Clubhouse. Okay. So for all of you out on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, I want to wish you all a beautiful, blessed and prosperous day. Mm -hmm. And uh, just thank you for tuning in. God bless you and happy holidays. Merry Christmas to God be the glory. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Thanks, Michelle. Uh-huh. And stick around here for just a minute, Summer, as I am um, going to close us out here. Okay. <laughs>